All right. It says meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. So good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Worcester City Council Council held by Zoom video conferencing and on YouTube this Monday, May 4th, 2020. It is after 7.30 p.m. The next regularly scheduled council meeting will be Monday, May 18, 2020. Miss, <clears throat> excuse me, Ms. DePaulo, as clerk of council, would you please call the roll? Mr. Ansel? Here. Mr. Bostanzik? Here. Mr. Cavan? Here. Mr. Myers? Mr. Sanders? Here. Mr. Silvestri? Here. And Ms. Warden? Here. Well, we do have a quorum. The agenda will remain as presented. And in trying to keep with as much as uh, what we traditionally do, at this time, I would ask you to stand and uh, join the members of the city council in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, to the, the republic for which it stands. stands one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty just and justice for all. Thank you, one and all. <clears throat> that brings us to the approval of the minutes from April 20th, 2020. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. A motion by Mr. Ansel. Uh, is there a second. second? Second by Ms. Warden. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The minutes of April 2020, <laughs> I repeat myself, the minutes of April 20, 2020 are approved. Well, welcome, Mr. Mayor. And again, our <laughs> second round of uh, meetings uh, using uh, this method. Uh, I wish we were in council chambers, but I guess this is uh, second best. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Myers, Johnny Come Lately has finally joined us. So uh, please note that uh, Mr. Myers is uh, with uh, the, uh, in, has joined the meeting. So, uh, well, the, Mayor, the traffic uh, was just terrible, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and you weren't answering your phone, so don't give me that. So, Mr. Mayor, welcome and uh, look forward to what you have to say this evening. Well, thank you, President Bidendike and Council members. Great to see everybody and uh, hope everybody's in, in good health here. Um, you know, it, it's gotten quite a bit busier here from about the middle of last week uh, through today. Uh, the day uh, was a crazy day, but that, that's a good thing. That means businesses and, and the society are starting to spin back up a little bit. So I uh, want to start out with, with uh, good news uh, from our hospital. We have no new COVID patients. Uh, since last week. So uh, we've gone essentially a whole week without a new patient. Uh, I think we have one possibly left uh, in there, but uh, they are uh, still holding <coughs> and uh, hopefully improving. Um, to date, we've only had a total of around 12 COVID patients in our hospital totally. So so uh, that's, uh, we, we never saw a, a surge uh, other than uh, maybe a small one uh, with a number, maybe five or six patients uh, at a time in the hospital. So that's, that's good news. Um, we're real happy that the governor has opened up resuming non-essential surgeries and procedures uh, as of last Friday. <coughs> we are starting to see some normal traffic coming back into the hospital and that that's really good news. So um, today, May 4th, uh, the, the uh, governor allowed general offices and businesses of manufacturing, distribution and construction to, to reopen. So uh, that's uh, nice. I know a number of businesses here in town were, were uh, doing just that. So that, that's good news. May 12th, uh, retail business and service industry will be allowed to reopen so a week from tomorrow. So we're, we're starting to see things uh, coming back a little bit, and that, that's great. 
Um, we will still have a maximum of 10 people um, gathering and uh, still restricted and social distancing until May 30th, unless uh, he comes back and, and uh, suggests, suggests otherwise. Uh, some sad news or, or unfortunate news, um, the Memorial Day Parade put on by the Veterans Service Commission and uh, the Memorial Day Parade Committee and the 4th of July fireworks sponsored by Worcester Fireworks Foundation have both been canceled by their organizations due to the virus this year. So, uh, so those both have been uh, canceled for our community um, and, uh, mm. and we appreciate all the help from, from those two individual groups that, that put those uh, uh, celebrations on. Um, a pool decision, I, I know everybody has uh, been anxious about what is gonna happen with our city pools this year. Uh, we have not finalized yet and uh, we're, we're holding out, hoping that we'll have some sort of a direction come out of uh, the state director of health because uh, that's the, the, the agency that really is in, in control of those uh, uh, situation. So we're going to have to make a decision really yet this week what, which direction we're going to head um, because we have to hire lifeguards and, and uh, spin the pools up if we're going to open. So so we're, we're hoping that maybe there'll be a, a ray of sunshine coming in on that, but we're, we're uh, I guess, not not thinking it's going to happen, but we'll, we'll let you know this week. Um, Joel and Andre sent out uh, just this afternoon uh, this report to all council members. It's called the Financial Report and Up Operations Update. So a lot of good information there. And uh, if either one of those two want to jump in and, and explain that here at the end, I'll, I'll let them uh, have that. But um, so that's in your uh, in your um, email boxes if you haven't seen it already. Actually, this year was, has been off to a very good start uh, for at least the first two months. And then uh, March turned into to not so good because of the virus. Um, so, you know, we, we felt like we were on some, some pretty good trends moving forward and hopefully that will come back once things reopen. Um, we still are under the belief that uh, we probably will be down about 10 to maybe 12% of our projections and plans uh, as far as our budget. So unless uh, the other caveat is if a second wave hits hard, then that, that could easily change that. But at this point, that's what we're, we're projecting. Um, we held a ratings call with Standard & Poor's last Friday, uh, May 1st, and uh, we were all felt it went pretty well. So um, they'll be giving us uh, some information on that, and I'll turn it over to Andre here at the end and let him uh, sort of give you the timeline on all, all of that to uh, get a, uh, uh, the bond sold for that we've talked about. Uh, Charter Review Commission is still working, and uh, they do plan on having a recommendation to City Council by uh, Council's June 1st meeting, unless um, they get into some, some uh, tight uh, uh, controversy within uh, the end uh, couple chapters of our, our charter. So, so things are going very well. It's a really good committee, and they're, they're working hard and, uh, and really taking seriously what, what we ask them to, to review for us. Um, the spring newsletter, spring 2020 newsletter came out uh, in your newspapers. If you haven't seen it, we've got copies here at City Hall, but um, I, I've heard really good remarks about it. I, th I think it looks great. And uh, Lynn DiPaolo and Joel, Joel Montgomery and our city managers really are the, the artists behind making the <coughs> thing come so thank, Thanks to all those folks. Uh, Lynn, you do an awesome job of of getting her all into to, uh, pretty form for everybody. Um, we held a second, or I'm sorry, we held a special Worcester growth meeting today uh, and had two CRA recommendations that we reviewed. Um, the first one is for Weaver Custom Homes, uh, townhomes, and it's the project in, in downtown Worcester where the Horn Nursing Home used to be. Um, I think there's been a little confusion <laughs> on the subject we always knew that they were going to come forward with a CRA request. Uh, it is a residential request, 
And uh, we, we told people that uh, at the end of last year when we accepted the, the offer to purchase it by uh, Weaver Custom Homes and Ray and Associates. Where the, the discord came in though, is we were told Ray and Associates would be, be the first building to build on the site. And that would take a commercial CRA. So we were prepared and ready for that to happen because they had said that they wouldn't be bringing the, the condos uh, forward for a residential CRA until probably later this year and, and they would build next year. Well, at this point, we still have not closed on the sale of that property to Weaver Custom Homes. Uh, it, it's all ready to, and uh, uh, John, maybe if you wanna weigh in at some point and, and, and give the idea of, of when that closing is supposed to happen or Jonathan, either one of you. Um, so the thing about a residential CRA, they don't have to apply for those until six months after completion of the project. And so that's what we were running on. And we were assuming the Ray would be first and then the we were custom home second. Um, so all of a sudden last week, we heard from uh, Mr. Stutzman that that was, uh, uh, had changed a little bit and, and he was ready to move uh, forward with the, um, with the Weaver Custom Homes uh, condos down on that Horn property, um, which is wonderful. I mean, that that is great news. That's exactly what we want to have happen. But hey, it, Bob, it, it uh, what, things. Where, so, where was the application between uh, April 1st, which is the application date? And and I mean, if you didn't know about it till last week, where did the, why is the application if, if you didn't have it? Uh, Jonathan, do you want to jump in on that one? Sure. Uh, we, as far as the application goes, uh, we originally started this project uh, with the assumption we would work out a model very similar to what we did with Merchant's Block. And as we went through that process, um, starting in uh, December, working through January, going into February, uh, it became uh, apparent that that wasn't going to be a good fit for this particular project. There are several differences, um, being that, uh, especially since we have some uh, physical separation between the residences and the commercial building. And uh, so then we had to do some coordination uh, to make sure, uh, one, uh, how, how do we incorporate condominiums on a new site uh, into um, our residential program. And uh, as we did that, uh, we're still right now working with Ray and Associates to complete their application, but that will be separate to their commercial business, which requires advanced approval before um, construction would, would begin. Demolition in practice has been okay. Um, and that's uh, some of the work that you see today taking place with uh, the condominium area. That's a uh, demo that, that you see there in the parking lot. With the, the residential, uh, we uh, later uh, in, in April provided um, Merle uh, Stutzman, who is uh, heading up Weaver Custom Homes with uh, some documentation uh, that uh, would in this case, uh, to follow along with their original proposal, they're seeking a 50% CRA. And that particular um, document was an agreement uh, where Weaver Custom Homes would uh, agree to request uh, only 50%. Uh, whereas in residential <laughs> CRAs, typically one size fits all. And so that, that, that's one of those items we can look at a little bit later as we get into the uh, specific legislation change. But you'll see a little item in there that says um, up to 100%. Uh, for 12 years, uh, which matches our new construction um, policy, uh, as the applicant may request. And in this case, the applicant's requesting less than that for this particular project. <coughs> uh, so there will be an application eventually uh, for the condominiums, and they will require 15 days review by the uh, local school districts, uh, including the Wayne County Schools Career Center and the Worcester City School District. But that comes six months after 
uh, or up to six months after construction is complete um, per our code. And that's where we will, um, as that goes through, that, that's an administrative approval uh, that gets uh, <coughs> accomplished and processed through the housing officer, which uh, today's yours truly. Later on in the future, that could be anybody else. Um, but there's, uh, much, much like a sign permit, there's a designated official who is responsible for making sure it uh, has the T's crossed, I's dotted, and there's a housing um, council that serves as a body that can hear any appeals, which uh, I know uh, several members here on council have volunteered to be a part of that, um, and, and that's one of the other functions that that body would serve as well. So uh, I'll jump back in here. Jonathan, thank you. I knew you could tell the story better than anybody because you've lived and breathed it. Oh, and by the way, April 1st happened to be the first COVID patient in our community. So it, it's maybe had, we've had a few other things happening in our world around here that, that also uh, has took, taken some precedent. So, so hopefully that has answered your question there, Mr. Myers. Um, I do want to say thank you to Mr. Stutzman. Uh, we, we called him last week and said that we had a, a piece of legislation that we needed to get to <laughs> with some, a little bit of a language change so that everything would, would flow smoothly uh, moving forward for him. And, and he uh, met with us and uh, is present tonight on, on the call. So, uh, so we, we, can, we can talk about that when the legislation comes up, but, but no, it really is a good thing for our city and we're, we're so pleased to have it moving forward. The second uh, CRA was uh, for Timothy Enterprises and Caliber Holdings. Um, most of you will recognize it as Nagy's uh, Auto Collision uh, because that's the name it presently is under. Uh, they're looking to build a new building out on 585 and um, both of these CRAs uh, received a positive recommendation from Worcester Growth to City Council. So, so that really is everything that I have at this point. We'll probably chime in uh, throughout the meeting, but uh, Andre or Joel, do you want to give any report on uh, either the standard and pours or your um, or your financial and uh, <coughs> update. How about I take a second and then Joel can. All right, fair enough. Sounds so, good. Uh, okay, as Bob said, uh, Friday, May 1st, we had a ratings call with standard and pours. Um, it, there was a, a gentleman from Chicago and uh, another person from uh, Texas, actually, from Standard & Poor's. So there's like a, a junior and a senior on the call. And there was a, the city team was me, Bob, Joel, and Jonathan. And then we had our bond council on as well. But um, we thought the call went very well. It was the longest ratings call I've ever been on. I believe it was 50 minutes, maybe. N never been on a call that long. Um, so... May 11th, no later than May 11th, we'll have our rate. Uh, May 21st, we will auction these bonds on the internet. And then the money will be wired to us June 9th. That is the date of the closing. Just as a reminder, it's the issue is about $15.6 million, two million of which is new money. The remainder are for uh, order issuances that we are going to refinance at a lower rate to save uh, approximately three funds money, including the general fund. Um, the only other thing I did want to mention, um, our, our tax receipts are down, but they're only down from what I budgeted through April at about 2.2%. Wow. Uh, that looks, it looks a lot worse if you go year over year because last year, uh, over the month of uh, March and April, we received a million dollars in net profit tax from um, on my business that won't be repeating itself this year. So I had factored that into my, my uh, budget projections for 2020. Um, and the, uh, let's see, oh, the other thing I did wanna to say too is that so with the state, federal government and the state government changing the uh, due date of July 15th for both uh, 2019 final return and 2020 first and second quarter estimates, that will uh, impact our results as well, for at least until uh, July 15th. So I would imagine uh, as time goes on, that, that gap will grow. Our 2.2% variance will probably be a little higher than that. But all in all, uh, like I said, our, our withholding through April, in spite of all this, was actually up by 1%. 
$31,000. So uh, I'm cautiously optimistic uh, we've got some incredible uh, diverse companies in our town that are doing a fantastic job. Any questions? I do have a question, Andre, um, <laughs> if, I, if I may. I know um, I've talked to, well, one other community in particular, and, and I think across the board for city finance directors, um, there's some grave concern. And I know, um, uh, Bob, you had mentioned something being down 10 to 12% in your comments. And could you refresh my memory? What was that 10 to 12% specifically? That, that's really from our general fund, what our budgeted general fund dollars were for the city. Okay. Okay. So like I said, I know, you know, there's someone who's been 40 plus years in the, in, in the finance world and, and it'd be about a, a 45 minute drive from here, but in a small community similar to ours. And I know there's some major concern that, that probably won't manifest itself until collect until, uh, you know, next year. Um, do you have any thoughts on what the future may bring, Andre, in terms of projection? No, well, I'm I'm optimistic. I, I don't see this as a long-term issue. I see this as a temporary issue that okay. will write itself. Okay. Even with folks being laid off, out of work, uh, downsized, that kind of thing? Well, yes. I would the jump other, yeah. in. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. Sure. No, go ahead. I, I would jump in, David. Um, we as a community are, are really blessed right now that uh, we have a, a very diverse business uh, and industry. <coughs> so even though we do have some that are down, uh, mainly those dealing with automotive uh, parts, uh, sure. the industry is all uh, down and waiting for things to turn. At the same time, those are down. We have things like Gojo that's making the, the Purell, which are just they, they, they can't find enough hours in the day to, to accomplish things. Uh, and we have food industries like Daisy and, and Frito-Lay and, and um, home, uh, repair type of industries like uh, Worcester Brush that um, I think have gone through tons of paintbrushes. If, if, if I'm any indication, because my wife had me painting everything in the house. So, I, I mean, you know, we're so fortunate to have some industries up while others are down and vice versa. So I, I, I agree with Andre. I think uh, the, we'll, we'll feel something in the community. There's no question, but I don't think it's uh, going to be quite as, as bad as in some places around us. Thank you, Bob. Point well taken. I had heard that home improvements are up at unprecedented high, high rates because people are stuck at home. So uh, we are diversified enough to truly take advantage of it. There's other communities that are expecting a 30% or greater downturn in their revenues and, and uh, we can we can consider ourselves blessed. Thank you. Yeah, and just one final point, Bob's diverse, diversification comments. Yes, we have, I mean, if you think about it, we have the county seat, we have the Worcester City School District, we've got the College of Worcester, we've got uh, obviously Luke, we've got the Worcester Community Hospital, this is the second largest employer in the city, Frito-Lay, um, The Ohio State University, uh, I could go on, on, but we are very, very diverse. Um, so I, that's why I, again, feel uh, fairly confident. Great, thank you. But the other thing I would say is, we we have we have gone through uh, dips or economic struggle struggles before. If you remember, Rubbermaid left some I don't know, whatever eighteen to seventeen years ago, whatever the numbers are, and oh. Back during the Great Recession, uh, when uh, the the state, you know, cut our local government funding and also the uh, death tax was cut, that hit us two million dollars. So, we do have some experience if we have to right size and if we have to do it fast. So, I'm confident in uh, the, the leadership abilities of, of, of the managers in place and in uh, all the people <laughs> in the city of Worcester. If I could add one thing, we still have a healthy balance in our rainy day fund, correct? Bingo. Absolutely. That yes, we could, yeah, we, we could go, uh, I mean, without cutting expenses, we could go 200 <clears throat> some days with, without a penny. And we are very fortunate lucky. Bob and I have been on several calls with mayors around the state of Ohio that are panicking because, you know, they don't have, uh, you know, th those reserves. So, and the other, some of these other cities are very dependent upon the retail sector of which obviously we're not. Uh, so 
And again, it's good. You know, we're going to feel pain. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, we're in a good not... spot. We're in a good spot. Thank you. Joel, did you have anything to add before we uh, turn it back over? To you? <clears throat> Just a couple of quick things. Yeah. And our managers are really good at, and, and obviously have a lot of experience, you know, watching their, watching the dollars. And you, you see that every year when you look at the budget, you know, we always, we, we always perform well against the budget come in under what we have budgeted. So um, no doubt that will happen. And they've been asked to tighten the belt a little bit, you know, at just, just in case. So you, you'll see that. <laughs> and, and speaking of the managers, they're the ones that, you know, keep track of all the data, put together their annual reports. Um, and that's where we've drawn most of the operational data in the summary report that you sent you this evening. Um, so make sure you let us know if you got that. It's a pretty large document. I just want to make sure you got that summary document. And Lynn's going to, I think, put it on Curio as well. So you can, just in case, maybe it was too big for you uh, to download. So the um, additional thing that we added, and I, I sent this out a week or so ago, um, was data that we've been tracking, but hadn't had a good way to publish. But we've, we've recently published that, and it's on our website, and that's performance indicators, key performance indicators that we got from other cities, <laughs> other best practices, and we've include, included some of that in the report this year, so you can see, you know, how we're doing, um, and please give us feedback on that, you know, if there's things that are helpful, things that aren't, we can always, you know, track and report other things, but we included some of that in the report uh, as well, uh, and then there's more details on our website for that. And so, they, and overall, that we do very, very well compared to other communities. Um, the other thing we added right at the end was just a couple of pages of some first quarter uh, data uh, for operations. So things like permits, water demand, um, which is interesting. You know, we had more water demand in March of this year than we had in March of last year. Um, so that was one thing that actually went up. Um, so, you know, take a look at that. Let us know if you have any questions. Typically, we present this and have the managers there to, to answer questions, but we're not quite in the place to do that right now. So it, it'll be a little more reading, I guess, uh, than, than normally. So that's all I have. Great. With that, Mr. Beitendeck, we uh, thank you for the time and uh, wish you well in the meeting. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we don't have any uh, petitions, so I turn to Mr. Scavelli to see if there's any communications from the public. Uh, there are none right now, but I will just take a moment to say that um, we do currently have 14 viewers uh, who are watching right now. On the uh, right-hand side of your screen, you will see a place that you can comment. As long as you have signed in to uh, YouTube, uh, you should be able to, uh, to type in a comment. I will be monitoring those. Um, so if at any point you uh, would like to, uh, to make a comment, I can, if it's appropriate, I will bring them to the attention of uh, city council. Um, so uh, please uh, let me know if, uh, if you're out there. And other than that, I will turn it back over to uh, President Bidendike. Okay, so that will get us through item number four on the agenda brings us to item five. And we have no committee reports or public hearings. Item six, unfinished business. There is no unfinished business, so that'll roll us right into uh, item uh, seven, uh, new business. And we do have four items uh, under new business this evening. The first is uh, ordinance number 2020-13. Uh, it will be presented by uh, Mr. Ansel. It is slated for uh, three readings, and I would note uh, it deals with a property that was sold by our videographer, uh, the Wellerts. So uh, before I get to you, Mr. Ansel, uh, would you please read the uh, title, Mr. Palmer? Ordinance number 2020-13. Ordinance amending ordinance number 2014-06 by authorizing the mayor to transfer the community reinvestment area agreement from CNC Wellert Properties LLC to Walnut North Investment Properties LLC and declaring an emergency. Mr. Ansel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a very routine CRA transfer request. 
and it's being requested uh, by CNC Wellert Properties LLC. As uh, you recall, uh, they did receive a 10-year a real estate tax exemption in 2014 for the rehabilitation of the 149 North Walnut Street, Worcester, Ohio, uh, downtown mid-use building with two first floor commercial spaces and three apartments in the upper parcel. The enterprise wishes to sell its building to Walnut North Investment Properties, LLC, member Keith Hartzler, and uh, he's on with us this evening. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Hartzler. And they would request that the properties uh, upkeep and the management support uh, be maintained and the two commercial spaces for lease and that the uh, CRA be transferred if approved, uh, would not result in any change to the original abatement levels. It's a 100% nor its term which is scheduled to expire on 12-31-2024. Of course, it's subject to the building old owners upholding the project commitments. Also, the two job commitment would be amended to from retained to created to reflect the current conditions and provisions that would be added to the increased payroll. Approximately five years of tax abatement remain on this agreement. And Jonathan's on here, if there's any questions but uh, I would hope that we could continue to maintain um, this cooperative uh, support for the Wellard's significant investment and upgrade, uh, total capital investment of uh, $82,750 for the renovation of this uh, referenced facility. Any, With that- Anything else you want to do this evening? Yes, I would uh, motion to suspend the rules of council and move ordinance 2020-13 to third and final reading, Mr. President. Okay, uh, motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? David Silvestri will second. All right, second by Mr. Silvestri. Would you please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules? Ansel? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Gordon? Jen? Yeah. Can you hear me? Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Costanzic? Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. I turn to you again, uh, Mr. Ansel. Motion to adopt, Mr. President. Motion to adopt by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Miss Warden. Okay, uh, I will open it up if you have any questions or comments. I know as uh, Mr. Ansel said, uh, the uh, purchaser uh, who's a uh, member owner, uh, Mr. Hartzler is uh, here to ask any questions. All I know is I see that building every day and it, it certainly, the Wellerts did a nice job and I'm sure that uh, Walnut North Investment Properties LLC will continue to keep the building looking nice. Anyone? No. Seeing none, then would you please call the roll uh, on the motion to adopt? Ansel? Yes. Cavan? Yes. My uh, Warden? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Estanzik? Yes. Okay, ordinance number 2020-13 passes. You got off easily uh, tonight, Mr. Hartzler, but thank you for <laughs> joining us. And uh, I'm glad you... Uh, are uh, taking over the property and I'm sure it's in good hands. Seeing it's just catty cornered from me, I will keep an eye on it on a daily basis. So be warned. <laughs> thank you for coming tonight. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes, thanks, Jen. Okay, that brings us now to ordinance number 2020-14. It will be presented by Mr. Bastanzik. But before we get to you, Mr. Bastanzik, I'll look to Ms. DePaulo to please read the title. 
Ordinance number 2020-14, an ordinance vacating a right-of-way adjacent to Old Airport Road in the city of Worcester, pursuant to RC 723.05. Mr. Bostanzik, the floor is yours, or should I say the airwaves? Sure. Are yours. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, this is simply um, a request to vacate the existing right-of-way adjacent to Old Airport Road, and what this will intended to do is to uh, permit the uh, the Daisy Way extension project to be a bit cleaner in look. Yeah, everybody got a, um, a map. I'll just hold this up. And um, this is Old Airport Road. This is Daisy Way extension. The uh, property in question is just a little sliver right over here. And it's just a very, very small amount of property. And this will just uh, the uh, property owners have also signed off on this, uh, and um, that's about it. It's a pretty simple piece of legislation, I think. Um, Roger's on the line. He he can probably explain it a, maybe a little more detail if anybody has any questions. Yeah, it really, it really does not impact our finances, and it allows our project to... Uh, go forward without uh, any major hitches uh, and to, it'll alleviate any impediments uh, down the road. Yeah, this is this is something just, uh, Roger, it's one of those little things you have to have that it's, you know, you, when they say you have to cross the T's and dot the I's type of pieces of legislation, so. Sure. Well, any questions? do you have a, a motion for us? Uh, yes. Um, I would uh, motion to adopt. Well, we need to suspend the rules first. Oh, okay. Uh, like, well, so th well, on my sheet it just says it's budgeted, and yes, at three readings, not required, but uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Me, so. Yeah. Well, we're not spending money; we're uh, vacating, yeah. so it, it really is a, a transfer it's, of interest. So we okay. need three readings. Okay. So, well, I uh, make a motion. Not to be a stickler, you know. <laughs> well, God what, only knows where I got that from. We have to do it right. Um, I make a motion yeah. to uh, suspend the rule, rules and put it on third and final. Okay. Yeah. Motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Bestanzik. Is there a second? Second well, by, by David Celestri. I heard two voices and I just saw no hands. So, Scott Myers, who wants I'll second to take it. it? I'll, I'll so second that, the motion, yeah. Mr. Bite Dyke. This is Scott. Okay. Myers. Mr. Uh, Myers uh, seconded the uh, motion to suspend the rules. Ms. DePaulo, would you please call the roll on that motion? Kevin? Yes. Warden? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Stanzik? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. I look to you again, uh, Mr. Bestanzik. Make a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt by Mr. Bestanzik. Is there a second? Second. second. I saw David Silvestri's finger go up with a second, so I'm going to recognize him. So any further questions or comments? This is pretty perfunctory and just a, kind of a housekeeping thing to make a project uh, as uh, it was uh, presented cleaner. And it, it, we don't give up really much of anything other than a little sliver of a right of way. Okay, seeing none, uh, Mr. Paulo, would you please call the roll on the motion to adopt? Gavin? Yes. Warden? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Vestancic? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Ordinance number 2020-14 uh, passes. Next piece of legislation, which is to use the term, the penultimate uh, piece of legislation, ordinance number 2020-15. It'll be presented by Mr. Ansel. It is slated for three readings. 
Before I get to you, Mr. Ansel, again, I will ask Ms. DePaulo to please read the title. Ordinance number 2020-15, an ordinance amending the annual appropriation ordinance. That's short and sweet. So Mr. Ansel, the floor is yours. Yes, um, this request is really in a nutshell um, is to have a budget for the sludge storage tank this year since it was not encumbered last year. It didn't get encumbered last year uh, because the bids were tossed because they came in higher than projected budgetary figures. So we had it encumbered in two, 2019, the bids were not successful. So the net impact is now we're just going to take those funds that were not encumbered and move them to the 2020 appropriations, uh, the 1.8 million uh, that should have been uh, encumbered in 2019 will move to 2020 uh, to support the final bid, final expenditure of $2.7 million. So it's just a um, uh, really a, a clearing of 2019 to 2020 appropriations because the funds weren't encumbered. And Mr. Doherty is here this evening. If there should be additional questions, I know that he would be happy to respond and answer those questions. All right, uh, do we have a motion? Seeing for none, us? Yeah, I would motion to adopt, Mr. President. Uh, or suspend the rules. And, suspend the, the rules. Case. Yes. All right, motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? I'll second. Second to Mr. Myers. All right, I, I heard Mr. Myers say his name before you did uh, Mr. Pistancic, so I will recognize Mr. <laughs> Mike, Myers. That's because I sit closer. You can hear me first because I sit closer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's funny. Would you please uh, call the roll on the suspension of the rules, Mr. Paul? Uh, Bastancic? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Cabin? Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. Mr. Ansel, do you have another motion? Motion to adopt, Mr. President. Motion to adopt by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second out there? Second. Second by Ms. Warden. See, you have an advantage. I can tell by the uh, timber of your voice who you are as opposed to some of these. Uh, <laughs> the first time a woman's had an advantage in one of these meetings. That's great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So um, second second by uh, Ms. Warden. Is there any questions? This was really a, a financial housekeeping matter to keep the auditors happy that uh, the monies were appropriated in the years that uh, that they're going to be spent. So, if Mr. Doherty can shine any additional light on that, uh, he's welcome to. But it, it's pre pretty simple. Even me, you know, can uh, understand it. So, seeing none. Would you uh, call the roll on the motion to adopt there? Stancic? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Cavan? Yes. Ordinance number 2020-15 passes. We will turn to our final piece of legislation uh, tonight. It will be presented by Mr. Ansel. Again, this is slated for three readings. Before we get to you, Mr. Ansel, I will have Ms. DePaulo, if she would, read the title. Ordinance number 2020-16, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2004-33, by permitting construction for residential CRA tax incentives in the Worcester Community Reinvestment Area Number One, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Ansel, the floor is yours. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I want to start by highlighting how effective the Community Reinvestment Act, CRA, has been for the city of Worcester and the millions of dollars that have been channeled through uh, this piece, which commenced back in 2004. The original ordinance is 2004-33. <clears throat> that was the CRA number one. And as investments and visions and plans develop and continue to um, redefine themselves, um, new revisions must be made to accommodate those type of initiatives. So in 2008, we had another revision that really coordinated the fast track or the expedited process for the CRAs, the ones that clearly fit the criteria and had the proper community support <clears throat> could be fast tracked to um, hit windows for development and timing to meet the consumer needs. And um, this is really what this ordinance uh, is about this evening. And I wanna compliment uh, the mayor and the administration and Jonathan um, for clarifying some of the timing issues or concerns uh, certainly the dynamics, the dynamics of uh, this piece of legislation changed based on the timing um, requirements of the developer and the uh, redefinition, if you will, of the original project scope with the commercial going prior to the residential and that being changed. So uh, the city was nimble and responsive uh, with minimal input. And uh, I wanna thank them for that because uh, they've come up uh, with a very fine ordinance revision. So it will be the evolution of our original ordinance in 2004. It's had a great uh, run that allows us through the um, exemptions in the Ohio revised code to make such CRA revisions as negotiated on a case-by-case -case basis. And if you see the summation in our legislation this evening, it defines the ORC sections and the flexibility that the municipalities have to following the guidelines of the state, uh, making modifications to support these deviations as required. And there are four um, abatement parameters outlined, and I won't go through them all because we've had time to review those and we are all familiar uh, with the real uh, intent and focus of the CRA. Uh, but one is for 100% 10 years for remodeling of dwellings, not more than two houses. There's, there are a lot of duplexes uh, and the uh, CRA, so that covers that provision and that's the Ohio Revised Code 3735.67. The next abatement is up, for 100, up to 100% for 12 years, negotiated up to 12 years. We have that flexibility. Um, that's not an issue before us currently, but again, we have that ability <clears throat> and that's for apartment complexes of three or more units com considered commercial structures. And again, that's covered by the Ohio Revised Code, the same uh, piece that I highlighted earlier. The third item is 100% for 15 years, negotiated up to 15 years for new commercial or industrial facilities can be negoci negotiated on a case-by-case -case basis in advance of construction occurring. Then the final one that really is our focal point for the initiative before us with Weaver Custom Homes and Ray and Associates. Again, we should be very, very pleased and excited about this vision and I'll talk more about that. But the fourth item is the abatement can be up to 100% for 12 years, dependent upon the request of the applicant for the new construction of residential single family dwellings
that are individually platted when located in a C4 zoning district. And that would be the townhomes or the condos in the future. And that would again be covered under the Ohio revised code. So it now is providing more consistency and clarity um, as we evolve the dynamics to fit the requirements of multi-million dollar speculative investments in our CRA area, specifically our downtown. So that being noted, this is the precursor or the segue legislation uh, and this amendment uh, will accommodate the proposed Weaver Custom Homes townhome project in downtown Worcester, uh, which is a 50% abatement for 10 years for the new proposed dwelling. So they're well under the maximum request levels. Uh, we appreciate that. That is really in uh, a, a, a reinforcement of the collaboration and the partnership, strategic partnership that Weaver Custom Homes is making with the city of Worcester. I commend uh, Merle Stutzman and the entire uh, Weaver Custom Homes staff for uh, this commitment and investment in our downtown. Um, and unlike other residential CRA projects, as Jonathan touched on, this proposed project does not replace a home and is dissimilar to past condominium projects. Uh, so the project cannot be particularly tied to job creation, but it is tied into, again, increased property tax, strategic use in the residential downtown corridor and is supported by the Worcester Growth Corporation at our, um, uh, meeting this afternoon it was a very productive and insightful meeting. Everyone is excited about this. And I want to thank Jonathan Malay, especially for, uh, and, and uh, John Scavelli, uh, for uh, defining the next level of evolution to our invaluable CRA program within the city of Worcester. Jonathan, would you like to make any comments prior to uh, proceeding with this ordinance this evening? I, I think that you uh, captured almost all of that there and uh, thank you very much for the summation. Um, again, this is a incredibly important project for uh, downtown Worcester. Um, Weaver Custom Homes is, uh, looking at undertaking a, a massive investment that is genuinely a once in a generation type project for uh, our downtown and, and helping to coalesce and, and keep activity at the heart of our community. And uh, they have requested um, a, 12, uh, a 12 year, 50% uh, uh, CRA, which is uh, half of what is generally uh, I would say common with uh, projects of this uh, scale, magnitude, and quality uh, that uh, we've had in the same location. Um, so it, it's a project that undertaking it in that particular vein um, helps to uh, really benefit uh, not only redevelopment in our uh, downtown, but it returns a, a quicker uh, path to, to revenue growth for our uh, surrounding taxing districts, including the Worcester City School District and um, our, our own uh, city government. Uh, so it's a very uh, wonderful opportunity for us, both uh, from an economic and community and fiscal impact standpoint. Thank you for the correction too, Jonathan. I had said 10 years, it is a 12 year, so I stand corrected. But the real key there is the uh, partnership approach that the Weaver Custom Homes is taking by splitting the difference with us. I mean, that's, that's true uh, collaboration. I wanna highlight also, it's all about location, location, location. You know, we all know the horn nursing home and prior to that the hospital um, facility the history there was rich but it was a tired facility then the near disaster associated with the unlawful uh, opi opioid treatment center the turning point um, this could have been the ultimate disaster 
in terms of how that property was really administered and handled. And again, the vision, the hard work and the confidence, and there's some luck factored in there too. Uh, the stars align, everyone worked together and to have a premier development in the one of the prime major corridors speeding into downtown Worcester with a showplace business and residential living really um, on the scale of merchant block for that to happen in a downtown area in the last 20 years. Jonathan, you correct me if I'm wrong and other members of council, it hasn't. For a town our size to have the development and the growth and the energy and the enthusiasm and the investment dollars, and we can attribute that to the effectiveness of our CRA. And this is again, just another step toward making these investors feel comfortable um, uh, uh, allowing the schools to enjoy higher revenues and tax base increase in growth and the resilience of our downtown. So uh, it's a wonderful outcome to a tremendous initiative and we want to support, and I know that will be coming before us at a future date, uh, the Weaver and the REA uh, 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 CRA request so we can uh, get these projects completed in downtown uh, and growing and vibrant. So with that, I would motion to suspend the rules and move ordinance 2020-16 to third and final reading this evening. Okay, a motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Mr. Kevin. Second by uh, Mr. Kevin. Mr. Paula, would you please call the roll on the suspension of the rules? Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yeah. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Cavan? Yes. Stanzik? Yes. And, and just for a point of clarification, so you don't get any nasty. Uh, letters from the turning point, which I think it was in the Ohio, it was breaking point was the name of the organization. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, well, again, I'll throw breaking point under the bus. Then. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> so the rules are suspended. Do you have another motion for us? Motion to adopt, Mr. President. Motion to adopt by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Cavan. Yes. Any other comments, questions? I know that Mr. Stutzman's uh, online here if uh, you want to talk to him. So, uh, Mr. Bill, I have a question if I can. Uh, Mr. Stutzman, um, can you give me an idea? Can you give us an idea of the uh, approximate cost uh, of the condos to, to purchase? I, could not find that information anywhere and I'm just kind of curious. Uh, they'll be in the upper twos, low threes in those ranges. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ansel, does, does this allow uh, Mr. Stutzman to move forward with the project in a timely manner? Yes, he has uh, six months from completion date to file the CRA. And I do know that the Worcester Growth Corporation is in support of this, and it would be a, a cursory council and administrative approval, Mr. Myers. Yeah. Anyone else? So as a follow-up to that, based on what the mayor told us earlier, the re and associates portion for the commercial property, um, how, how would that be realized? In other words, Mr. Stutzman can wait until after completion, correct? Correct. Okay. But REA, Ray and Associates, would have to submit their formal CRA request before commencement. Okay, and 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 they're okay with with with, with that. So they have a they have a timeline that's further on down the road. That would be a question for Jonathan and the administration. Jonathan, would you care to weigh in on that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we, again, have been working with Ray and Associates on their project. They're very close to finalizing their application. We understand we 
anticipate having it for you in June uh, at the latest. And uh, again, I think it's, uh, they, they've gone through uh, planning commission as well. Uh, they've put together a very beautiful uh, rendering, which again is uh, with, with aid and help from Weaver Custom Homes. Great, thank you. But as far as uh, uh, the other portion that we're talking about tonight with Mr. Stutzman, he can proceed right away and then has six months to file his application. Correct. Condominiums Correct. are considered residential for the purpose of Ohio's CRA program. Thank you so much. I have, I have a question to, for Mr. Malay. How are condominiums currently treated? I mean, we're making an adjustment for this project, so currently. So, so up until recently, we've typically had condominiums occur in mixed use developments. Uh, Weaver Custom Homes uh, office today uh, had luxury condominiums installed up above uh, that have been tremendously successful as well as uh, Merchants Block. And those are uh, units that uh, we tie the uh, commercial abatement uh, to those units. Uh, so even though they're residential, they're receiving uh, a commercial abatement, which means that the abatement is secured by job creation taking place at the site. And those are connected buildings, one on top of the other. In this particular case, what's distinct is that the buildings are separated and there, there's enough geographic and spatial separation. It makes sense to uh, have that be separate. And then it also uh, helps to prevent any liability issues in the future by not tying that particular uh, in this case, it would be 12 homeowners, or I'm sorry, 10 homeowners, not tying them to the performance of a, a commercial building that um, is uh, completely removed from where they are. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Stutzman, I just have um, a quick, I guess, comment. I noticed that the uh, work has begun on the street today, downtown. Is that, that I'm guessing is part of your project, correct? That's the water and sewer lines to get to the property, yes. Okay, so um, can we assume then that everything is, I know you were kind of trying to adhere to a timeline. Um, so is everything on track now to meet the timeline that you were looking to, to your goal was? Yes, I mean, if this if this is it's completed tonight, we will probably by the end of this week be digging foundations for the first building. Great. Good news. How exciting <laughs> that should Dirt will be flying. <laughs> Dirt will be flying. Building will be going up. Yes. Great. I do appreciate you guys uh, getting this on agenda tonight to, to process. I do appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, seeing nothing else, I would uh, ask that Mr. Paulo call the roll on the motion to adopt. Myers. Sanders. Yes. Silvestri. Yes. Warden. Yes. Ansel. Yes. Cavan. Yes. And Bastan. Yes. Ordinance number 2020 day 16 passes. I'm excited that watching this project uh, uh, start. Uh, it too is really close to where I go to work every day. So I'll be having fun watching uh, dirt fly, so to speak, mm -hmm. buildings go up. And uh, congratulations to Mr. Stutzman for having a uh, vision and for uh, Custom Homes having the wherewithal to invest in the city of Worcester. And I mean, in the city of Worcester, you, can't get more of the in the, to the heart of the city than where they're going to be putting these condominium condominiums. Thank you. Thank you guys again. Have a good night. Thanks, Mara. Good night. Good night. Thank you. That brings us to the miscellaneous portion. Uh, just two quick items. I'd like to welcome. Uh, you, you can't see her. But uh, Samantha Ickes is here representing uh, the Worcester Daily Record or the Daily Record uh, taking the place of Jack Rooney, who's uh, moved on to New Hampshire, I believe, uh, 
<laughs> his uh, girlfriend or fiance is living and uh, uh, Samantha, Samantha Ickes is going to be uh, sitting in as a new reporter for uh, the city of Worcester Council. So uh, welcome, uh, Ms. Ickes. And I happened to notice as I was going by the Cleveland Clinic, the signs that says today or this week is National Nurse Week. So I want to recognize the uh, nurses and, you know, God bless them. They've had a particular hard time during this uh, COVID uh, virus. Uh, and thank you for your work. And after this is all over, you need more than a work or a week of recognition. Okay, we'll start uh, with uh, Mr. Bestanzik. Uh, nothing more at this time, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Cavan. Uh, I as well, I think everything was pretty well covered, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Sanders. Nothing to add, Mr. President. All right, uh, Ms. Warden. I have nothing to add, thank you. Mr. Ansel. Yes, I just want to uh, echo Bob's compliments to Lynn. The newsletter, the composition, the text, the message was spot on, uh, very professionally done. Uh, thank you for that uh, public relations uh, piece done so effectively. And uh, that's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, Mr. Silvestri. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple of things I wanted to follow up on, uh, a couple of things that the mayor addressed in his address to council. Uh, the first of those is the fireworks. I had not heard uh, the details of that. I know the celebration has been cut. Could you elaborate on that? I know we don't, it doesn't sound like they want to do the social side of that, but are they still shooting off any fireworks, just to, to clarify? If I could jump in here, uh, really the uh, Worcester Fireworks Foundation uh, raises funds to put on the fireworks here. Uh, if I may jump in, my there service club, the Worcester Exchange Club, raises $10,000 each year for the fire. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, last Friday, uh, and because of the Corvid virus, we just couldn't have our reverse raffles. So there are, is no funding, unless you are willing to reach in your left pocket there, Mr. Sylvester, and come up with 10,000, there will be no fireworks this year because there's no money. Understood, understood. I know people that uh, would be good candidates for that, but uh, um, thank you. Thanks for the offer, Mr. Beitendike. I understand. I wasn't sure how that went down. I did see them for you. They would see, you know, the Sylvestri uh, 4th of July <laughs> fireworks. I, I appreciate that. I do. Okay, okay, thank you. The second thing I have is about the pools. I know there's been some community concern about the pools. And I've been trying to stay in touch with what the governor has said. And I want to thank Joe Montgomery for, um, you know, staying in touch, not, not only with the governor, but with other colleagues from around the state, other administrators and what they're doing. Um, you know, the argument could be made that a, that a pool is, is pretty safe with as much um, antiseptic as what goes on and the chlorine in the pool, those types of things. Um, and I didn't know if we're waiting for a decision from the State Department of Health. That sounded like what that was part of what you mentioned. Um, I've not read through what the State Department of Health has put out specifically with respect to, to pool openings. But uh, like I said, I know there's been a lot of community concern and there's even been uh, a lot of thought put into what a plan might look like that would do, you know, that would, that would meet some of the general requirements. But is, the, is there an overarching uh, ban of uh, from the State Department of Health. Is that what we're dealing with? Right now that they are closed. Any, any activity that's like pools, playgrounds, recreation facilities, community centers, anything where people could um, congregate more than 10 people and where it would be difficult to maintain your six foot of isolation, that is what is specifically was left on the closure list. 
but I thought yeah. I I thought we have actually uh, opened up some types of things at the community center, for example. No, those that is specifically closed down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, things come back uh, specifically to the social distancing aspect, uh, both for the fireworks and the pools, is uh, how do you keep people 10 feet apart from each other or six feet apart from each other, especially like in the fireworks where everybody goes uh, up to the fields there on uh, the Kinney property. Uh, we, we just couldn't uh, keep that control over a crowd that size. And in, a, in our pools, yes, uh, we believe the chlorine does kill off uh, the germs, but it's more the face-to-face -face, uh, interaction that uh, how you got a pool full of kids. Uh, they, they're, they're kids. They're, they're going to do what kids do, and that's, uh, you know, have fun with each other. So that, that's the big problem. So I guess what I wanted to clarify is it, it's just the general um congregating issue or is it a, a specific pool ban coming down from the state it's both the pools are closed they are they are closed right now with no indication of when or if the governor will let them open and if you look at the closure list and and what is put out by the governor and the cdc you you can see very clearly what they're trying to do is limit people from congregating in greater than 10 and keep people maintaining that six foot isolation distance. Sure. And I guess just one final question. If we, uh, if we were prepared, what if, say the governor opens this thing in, in, in early June or mid June? So right now when the pools are open all season long, we lose between 165 and $210,000. It's just, um, you know, to keep, to keep the rates within reason for people can afford it, it just costs that much to keep them open. Um, sure. So the longer you go, obviously the, the greater that number is. Um, but, you know, we, that's a service that we provide so that, you know, that's something that's decided every year when we go through the budget. Um, but there are a lot of, it, it's about a month to ramp up. So we've been talking about this for many months and with a lot of our colleagues. And it, so for instance, you know, I'm, I'm sure they might be able to, to hire some um, previously trained and certified uh, lifeguards, but getting enough of them, because there is no training right now you know, where they can do CPR and that kind of thing or lifeguard training that we're aware of locally. Um, but at the same time, the assumption is those kids, a lot of them probably already have jobs, you know, instead of waiting around, we would have already filled those by now. Um, so I think getting enough of them in a timely manner would be a challenge. Um, and you have to have all the sanitary facilities, the restrooms and that. I know somebody suggested porta pots. Well, that's not legal. We can't legally open a pool with porta pots. Um, so I mean, there's, there's those kind of things that, that you have to do to, to maintain and get a license um, to operate a pool. So we understand that. I mean, I'm hearing it from both, you know, people that want them open, people that are afraid. Um, I'm in contact with cities all over the country right now. I, I know places in Arizona that have already closed their pools and they have a much more, you know, warm climate. So it's a difficult thing. It's a tough thing to, to do. And that's what we've been waiting as long as we can, um, you know, in order to, to make a decision. I, I will also say we know a lot of people use those things like the, uh, the, uh, you know, YMCA and other places have day camps and, you know, and they use those. Well, day camps are also on the list of closed things right now. They're, so um, we were having a discussion the other day that there's just not, we're not aware of one of any of those organizations out there right now that are even allowed to open that would use those. Um, but we know people need to plan, plan ahead. So that's why, you know, we're looking at trying to make a decision within the next week or two. Um, um, for that. And then by the first, second week in August, they're empty. People or kids are back to school and, and we don't even see, you know, many people there at that time. Okay. Thank you. That's all, all I have. Right. Thank you. Mr. Myers, we'll give you the last word. Mr. Myers. Thank you, President Biden. But uh, I, I would like to ask that the city is able to make sure that we're ready for the pools to be open. If, in fact, the governor 
uh, were to loosen the restrictions and, and things were to change so that we'd be allowed to do so. I know that the light pit is at the YMCA pool at the high school will remain closed because uh, the high school building will probably remain closed through the summer. Uh, and because that building is closed, the pool will be closed. There may be an availability of lifeguards that have been working there that could be available for us for the summer as well. So I know you guys are working hard and I appreciate that, you, that you're giving it due concern. I know it's a, a difficult and unprecedented time and I appreciate all the effort. Uh, you know, of course, I, I advocate for the pool to be open, but uh, that's just myself personally. You'll make the right decision when the time comes and thank you. All right, and I want to thank Mr. Scavelli for being the producer and director tonight. Uh, and hey, if this happens next year uh, and the uh, NFL draft has to be uh, online, again, <laughs> you could probably uh, apply to be the director. Thank you very much. Do a good job, John. Yeah, thank appreciate you. it. Thank and Mr. You. Ansel, thank you. Motion for to adjourn, Mr. President. Second. I'm making a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Silvestri. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, one and all. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.